This may look like the Asus Zephyrus G14 from last year because it is indeed the exact same chassis, but the internals are slightly different, making this laptop better in a few ways. First and foremost, diving right into it before we get into the benchmark test to show you how much better the latest Ryzen 9 5900HS and RTX 3060 equipped equipped version, excuse me, of this laptop. Let's jump into the keyboard backlighting. That was a big concern of mine of last year, and they have improved the keyboard backlighting on the new model. As you can see, the keyboard backlighting is much cleaner. It's evenly distributed compared to last year's model, where it was very mushy and had very poor distribution of the lighting through the keys. Now, another area of great improvement is the thermal performance of this laptop. It's something that really stood out to me as bad just just straight bad last year but this year's model is more than 10 degrees cooler at 72 degrees celsius now the fan noise is actually about the same so they've improved the thermal performance and kept the fan noise at about the same level if not a little bit quieter so you can run at about 44 decibels of fan noise and have great performance inside of premiere pro photoshop after effects and the like now I'm going to spare you on all the intricate details of the build quality and how this laptop is assembled, but if you want my full review on the Asus Zephyrus G14, you can check that out in the end cards at the end of this video. But let's get into the performance head-to-head -head benchmarks to see how much better this laptop performs compared to last year's model. Now this year's model, as I mentioned, comes with the Ryzen 9 5900HS with the RTX 3060 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and a 1TB SSD. Last year's model comes with the Ryzen 9 4900HS, the RTX 2060 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 1TB SSD. In Cinebench R20, you can see a big jump by almost a thousand points. Moving on to Geekbench Single Core, it really isn't even close by over 300 points. Now, what was strange though is in the multi-core Geekbench performance, we saw last year's model take a little leg up on this year's model. Moving on to the 3D modeling benchmarks, you can see the Ryzen 9 5900HS taking over the 4900HS on all of the benchmark scores and by about the same ratio on each of them. For the standard After Effects benchmark and the render benchmark, you can see the G14 with the 5900HS pulling ahead on both of those tests as well. Now, for the 4K export out of Premiere Pro, we actually saw faster export time by about 30 seconds out of last year's model, but for the DaVinci Resolve 4K export, we saw this year's model get about 35 seconds faster export time out of DaVinci Resolve. Now for the 4K playback test, this is where I take a project filled with 16,177 frames in total and play it back at full quality in the timeline. Last year's 4900HS saw three drop frames, this year's 5900HS saw zero drop frames. So almost identical, though it did drop three frames. Inside of Photoshop, we're seeing a big lift in performance as well. Now I will say in all reality, we're only seeing about a 10 to 15% increase in performance across all of the different benchmarks. But if you can find the 4900HS on a deal, it could be a good buy. But one big reason to buy the 5900HS, besides the increase in performance, is that it runs cooler than the 4900HS model from last year. So if you want better thermal performance, the 5900HS model is going to be where you should go. If you're curious about the exact price difference and availability, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Until next time, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.